audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Foundations. That's when judicial blind was was given. It wasn't given because of the crucifixion. Yeah, so that was actually about a week before the crucifixion, it was. wasn't it? That triumphal entry. Precisely. Where they said, tell the people to be quiet. And he said, well, if they are quiet, the rocks will cry out. Foundations. Understanding the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. With Robbo Robinson and Mandy Warby. Judaism and Christianity are both Messianic faiths, meaning that both of these faiths believe in a coming Messiah who will right the world of its wrongs and usher in an era of peace. Now, of course, uh, for Christians, we believe that the Messiah has come and that Mm -hmm. Jesus is coming again soon, but uh, Jews believe the Messiah is yet to come for the first time. Now, Some Christians don't think that we should really care uh, about his return at all and that it's none of our business, but the Bible has a lot to say about the coming of the Messiah, and if it's important enough for God to put so much of the coming of the Messiah in his word, then it's important for us to educate ourselves on the topic. It absolutely is. The Apostle Peter in his epistles, he actually talked about a time that would come where people would mock Messiah coming and say, oh, but everybody's been talking about him coming for all this time. He still isn't here. Ra ra ra. Let's just, you know, forget about mm. it. But he goes on to say, yeah, well, they forget also that there was a time when judgment came upon the world that they said would never happen as well. We're not supposed to take mm. lightly the fact that the Bible says that our Messiah is coming, that we're supposed to be watchful and alert, it's actually very important. If it wasn't important, God wouldn't have put it in his word. Now, I have to also say that sometimes people get so caught up in Bible prophecy that they get weird. Mm. They get really strange, you know, yep. um, and they put charts up everywhere <laughs> and they're little diagrams and they actually mm. they don't think or talk about anything else. You find a prophecy relating to every event that happens, or every every exactly. news story that's, is some sort of a fulfillment of something. Yeah, and and then it's it's almost like you you you're trying to force biblical prophecy into any event that happens, mm. and and honestly, that's really off. And it, it actually kind of discredits legitimate yeah. prophecy. I don't want—I don't want to say prophecy watching, but it's the study of of prophecy. Um, so you know, we don't want to get weird and strange. But if it wasn't important, God wouldn't have put it in His Word. And and let's face it, a huge portion of the Scripture is predictive prophecy. Mm. All Scripture is prophecy because it's it's all pointing toward the Messiah. So it's all Scripture is is prophetic. But then the predictive prophecy alone takes up a huge portion. So it's important. Okay, God's put it there, so therefore it should be important to us. But let's not become weirdos in the process. <laughs> now, I wanted to look at a couple of pro- uh, prophecies that we have actually touched on before. Just to sort of whet our appetite a little bit, because in the next program, I've got a really exciting prophecy about the coming of Messiah that I want to share about. It's really, Mm. really cool the way it was fulfilled as well. Most people don't know about it. But also, just to also reemphasize something we have mentioned before, and that is when the Jewish people rejected their Messiah or they didn't recognize his coming. See, God brought judicial blindness upon them. He didn't bring judicial blindness on them for his crucifixion. That was actually his master plan. Their rejection of him by their national leaders at the time was what brought the judicial blindness. And Jesus actually talked about this judicial blindness when he came in and he, and he wept and he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you have stoned the prophets and killed those who, who were sent to you. If you had recognized in this day, which was for your peace, but you haven't. And mm. so blindness yep. has come upon you. That's when judicial blindness was, was given. It wasn't given because of the crucifixion. Yeah. So that was actually about a week before the crucifixion, it was. wasn't it? That triumphal entry. Precisely. Where they said, tell the people to be quiet. And he said, well, if they are quiet, the rocks will cry out because exactly. this has all been prophesied. Yeah. But unfortunately, Christendom has said that the, the, the judgment on the Jews came because of the crucifixion, because they tried to kill God. Mm. Not true. The judicial blindness was issued the week before because the prophet Daniel had actually issued the prophecy that actually said the number of days it would be from the the, the decree to rebuild Jerusalem to the time of Messiah coming. He actually said the number of days. Mm. And those number of days was when he entered in Jerusalem on the donkey. And here's the interesting thing, and we've mentioned this before. The people of Israel did not own their own copy of the Bible. They did not carry a a little scroll in their back pocket. Mm. They relied on the teaching of their religious leaders, and yet God held them accountable 
to recognise the day of his visitation. Now, we in our modern day, we've got how many Bibles on our shelves, plus on our phones, internet for study and research. Most of it can be free to be studying the Bible to see what it says. And if God held them accountable with a severe judgment for not recognising his coming the first time, what would the consequences be for us if we're so dismissive of the mm. of Bible prophecy and Scripture when He's coming the second time with all the information we have? Yeah. So that's just a word of warning for us. Let's not be weird, but let's not be ignorant at the same yeah, time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so I wanted to quickly look at a couple of prophecies. Isaiah 7.14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Now, it's incredible that we talk about the, uh, the virgin birth. Somebody actually wrote a book once and said, you know, is the virgin birth really that important? You know, because it is the, the, the scripture could also mean a young maiden. Well, if she's not a virgin, why is it a miracle? Yeah, because right. women have been having babies since Eve. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the miracle only comes because she was a virgin yeah. and untouched. Yeah. Let's not try to discount There's that miracle. There's nothing immaculate about There's it. There's <laughs> nothing immaculate at all. Okay, so that's that's one uh, prophecy that points to Messiah being who he is. And let, let's face it, the reason these are important, when God can tell you who is going to do what before it actually happens, mm. he proves himself to be God, proves that the scripture is of divine origin and not made from the imaginations of man, and it proves who Jesus is. Mm. That's why it's really important that we understand this. And we've talked about this particular prophecy as well. Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, that talks about, for unto us a child is born, a son will be given to us, the government will rest upon his shoulders, his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace, and there will be no end of the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. Now, we've talked about this before, that we always focus on the child coming, Mm. but all those titles belong to that child. So when you you look throughout history, you think, well, who actually could possibly Mm. fit this criteria? And the thing that I don't understand is why, for to the Jewish mind, they don't look at this and go, how can the child born also be called Prince of Peace, Mighty God, Everlasting Father? How could the child be called that? So it's talking about this Trinitarian God that we know and love, and it could only have been fulfilled in Christ. All of those titles belong to that one person. But here's another one. This is from Haggai chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. So I'm trying to go for some of the lesser known prophecies. And this one says, uh, For the thus says the Lord of hosts, Once more in a little while I'm going to shake the heavens and the earth, the sea also and the dry land. I will shake all the nations, and they will come with the desire of all nations. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. Silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. And the latter glory of this house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. Now, this passage has always been known by rabbis and Jewish sages throughout for forever that this is pointing and talking about Messiah. And here's the thing. The nations of the world will come to the desire of all nations. So what is the desire? It's, it's an idiom for the Messiah. He is the desire of all nations, whether they realize it or not. They're all longing for mm. salvation from somewhere. And God would fill the second temple with glory. This is what he's saying. When did he fill the temple with glory? Because the glory departed mm, that's years right. before. Yeah. When Jesus entered the temple, the glory returned. And the glory of the second temple would be greater than the first. And some sort of say that maybe Herod's temple wasn't as glorious as Solomon's, and it wasn't. It wasn't as glorious. And again, it could only be fulfilled, the fulfillment of the glory returning to the temple, when Jesus himself came. So he Mm. is a fulfillment of that, when the hope of all the nations, whom they're longing for when he came. Well, next time we are going to look at an even more obscure prophecy that you might not be familiar with that points to the coming of Messiah. We'll explore. All that next time on Foundations. This has been Foundations, a look at the Jewish foundations of our Christian faith. For study notes, resources and more, see vision.org.au slash foundations. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.